welcome to marriage and life stories with Kansime. I am so excited about today's topic. We are going to to expound on the theme that men like what they see. Men like what they see. What do we mean when we talk about that? In most cases in our women discussion we are like, "Oh, you have to look good. What does it mean to look good?" Now, today we are going to go through the different transformation a single lady can have. You know, uh, you can dress up and you look different. You can dress in another thing and you look different and you match for every occasion. Now, look at me the way I am dressed. Hmm? I am feeling so smart, but this is for a different occasion. It is smart. It is official. It can go anywhere that is official. How should a, a woman look, uh, look like when she is at home? Now, the mistakes that women make in their dressing is you wake up in the morning, you have put on that huge dress uh, that is unkept, that is probably torn on one side, and uh, you, you're just there, njagalanga wendi. So I am going to put on that njagalanga wendi, and then I will put on another dress, uh, maybe something I can wear for a party, and then I will wear another one that I can wear that is very decent for the home, and I will leave the judgment to you. Uh, right now, I invite you to my wardrobe. Let's see the kind of woman that is Njagalanga Wendy, how she looks like. And I guarantee you, no man loves Njagalanga Wendy in any way. You, you make Njagalanga Wendy, you will kill your man emotionally. Let's come back with Njagalanga Wendy kind of woman. Okay, so today I, I, I have gone back to be the kind of Njagalanga Wendy woman. Now, this dress, as you can see, it is so huge, it, it can even make dresses for two people. Look at the way I made it. It's like I don't care. And it's torn on the side. Okay? If you look at this edge, the dress is torn. I'll stand up a little bit. It is torn on the side, but I'm wearing it anyway. And so I wake up and my husband gets from the home and he's just looking at me. And of course he gets used to the you, the one who doesn't care and he gets used to living with you. No emotions at all. And, and so you complain that your husband has given up on you because you have decided to be to whoever it may concern. Your dress is ugly. It's not ironed. You, you, you comfort yourself that you are at home. Now let me tell you, sometimes I also wake up and wear this dress. That's why I have it. And after wearing it, then I tell myself, really? Uh -uh. I should be wearing this going to the garden, not to sit in the home and do house chores. And so I have since stopped. I have since stopped, but when I have to do chores in the compound and all that, I'll pick it and wear it. But I'll not wear it every day for my husband. I don't want to be a, to whoever it may concern kind of woman, the one that they call Njagalanga Wendy. You keep wearing this kind of thing, your husband will definitely lose uh, emotions for you. He will die emotionally. If you want to stay at home, wait for me. I am coming back shortly and I will come with a neat house wear that any woman can wear. It is simple, it is smart, it is elegant, it is attractive for the man that you're living with. See you after this break. Okay, now you've seen the Njagalanga Wendy to whoever it may concern kind of woman. The huge dress she was wearing uh, and the I don't care attitude that she carries with herself. Now, this kind of dress is good for the home. It is simple, it is easy to wear, it's, uh, it's free, but it is, it is fitting. It is, it is stylish, it is colorful, it, it creates an impact in the face of the person to admire you. Uh, and although it is not that expensive at all. And so, cease to be the Njagalanga Wendy to whoever it may concern kind of woman, the one with an I, I don't care attitude, but know that even when you're at home, you can be simply beautiful, simply attractive, and uh, simply okay. Now, in addition to that dressing in the home, okay, there is another problem that women uh, create for themselves. 
and it does it on a turn off your spouse, but it also impacts on your health. For instance, I am right now seated in a big chair. Uh, it has a, a chair back where I can lean, but I am not sitting like this. Or I am not sitting like this. And I am not folding my legs and sitting like this. What happens when you put yourself in all those postures, even when you are at home? First of all, you are in a position that uh, is not attractive. Now, a lady who is seated the way I am seated, the legs crossed a little bit, okay? You are decent, my back is straight, my shoulders are straight. It projects confidence and it projects uh, well-being and it keeps me healthy, okay? Now, apart from straightening my back, it is also toning my stomach. You see, I cannot have a bulging stomach all the time because my stomach has been trained to, to, to flatten by the posture that I am seated in. Now, first of all, the dressing. Now, secondly, your sitting, the sitting behavior. When you're sitting, are you having your back bent like this? Hmm? Nothing, nothing attractive about you. The back is bent, it is unhealthy, and you look unkept. Oh, you're holding your cheek, you look troubled. Oh, you've twisted your legs in the chair, apart from making the chair dirty, your body posture is stunned, and there is nothing exciting about you, nothing alerting about you. Now men, they are always taken up by something that keeps them alert. Okay? I am seated. Now, I have gotten used to it. This is not how I was. Someone also told me what I am teaching you today, that I need to sit in this manner and I can be attractive, sending positive vibes around the room when I'm seated. In most cases, when people walk in the room, the person that is seated, that is carefully with shoulders up, projects confidence, throws that positive vibes, and will always be a center of attraction. And so, Dress modestly, even when you are at home. Don't give up on yourself and then sit appropriately. And when you're standing, also don't stand with a back bend, hmm? with scattered legs, and you're walking like pa, 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 throwing your feet everywhere. Walk gently, sit gently, keep your shoulders up. It helps your back, but you look attractive in that. Thank you so much. And now we are going to look at um, a lady who is going for a function. How should you dress? Is it about gomesi and wusuti only? Is it about the long dresses and the short dresses? I love gomesi. I love busuti. But there are some other things that a lady can wear that will make you look more attractive than just throwing things on yourself for the sake of it. Let's uh, have a short break and we'll go and we'll change into that fashion. Um, welcome back to the lady who is going to a function, to the party, and uh, I have decided to wear an off-shoulder dress. I know many people are uncomfortable with off-shoulder dresses, but our levels of confidence are, dif are different. If your level of confidence gives you that, uh, the power, the, the, the need to wear an off-shoulder dress, it's really a beautiful thing. Now, uh, some people will say, uh, when they look at, uh, at a lady wearing an off-shoulder dress or a sleeveless dress, they will say, oh, she, she's not from Mother's Union. She's not um, de decent. Now, let me tell you, the kind of women your husband runs, you, your husbands, those of you who are, who are unfortunate and the husband is cheating, the kind of women cheating husbands run for are those who are so confident. They are confident and they dress so decently and so attractively. 
Now, I chose this dress because it enhances my sense of confidence and beauty. Because I've straightened up my shoulders, I am not worried about you know, having this, this kind of look. Because I know how I am going to sit, I know I am confident about it. I am not going to have a bulging stomach around me. Now, let me tell you, that bulging stomach that you are suffering from, it only goes away by what we call a tummy tuck. You see, the way I am sitting now, I am talking, I am not failing to breathe or something. When you tell someone about a tummy tuck, they are like, oh, I, am, I can't breathe when I'm holding in my tummy. Yes, you can breathe. Tummy tuck, it's a matter of learning the practice of tucking in these muscles. Okay? Right now they are tucked in and the stomach is flat. So when they are tucked in, your back is able to be straight. Your chest is, is pushed forward and these shoulders, the, the muscles are well toned. So you don't have a bulging shoulder right behind here. And so all those things we do to build a sense of confidence. Remember every man wants a woman they can show off. They want a woman they are so proud of. They need a woman who, when you step out in public, you are good to show. You are attractive. There is something excellent about you. I keep telling people that the moment uh, other people stop commenting about you, then the person you need to be sorry about, sorry for, is your husband, because he's practically bearing. I want to throw this stone in a, in a pack of bees now. Why are Christian marriages failing? Why are they failing so badly that the pastors will go for the girls who sing in the choir? That the reverends will go for their parishioners, the, the, the ladies who, you know, who, are, who come to church? Yes, they do. You are trying to be you know, so moralistic and your dressing is so bad and so terrible. And when your husband is admiring other people, you are fighting. Fighting will not help you. Be the best version of yourself. Now, I told you the reasons why I chose to buy this dress. It gives me confidence. Now, the moment I am so confident about myself, my husband has no choice. He's going to be attracted. Every woman is attractive for as long as she is confident. And so Christian marriages are failing. You believe that uh, being a decent lady is wearing a huge ugly dress, is sitting humble. You know, this is the humble you talk about. Hmm? You're humble. Your back is on the chair. You're humble. Your arms are folded. No. That will not build your marriage. Believe me, that will not make your marriage. Making your marriage requires a lot of inner work within you. First of all, build your character. Make it the best version of yourself, character-wise. If someone else was like you, talks like you, uh, sits like you, behaves like you, would you be attracted to that person? The moment you ask yourself that, then you're going to work on your character. Then number two, you're going to work on your looks. If you are in the home, be nice and attractive. If you are going for a function, be the center of attraction. First of all, satisfy yourself. I'm not saying go out there and, 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 and dress naked and, and all that, but dress moderately. Because if you are going to say they dress naked, husbands, pastors, reverends, bishops, they are running after those people who dress like that. Why are they running after them? Because they look attractive. And so my dear ladies, I'm asking you, can you learn to be attractive to yourself? Right now I'm feeling so good. If I stand, if I turn around, I am looking good. I am not having a bulging stomach. I control what I eat because I want to look good and attractive for my husband. 
Now, this morning I was wearing a dress and, you know, I, it's a Saturday. Uh, I woke up and, and I put on this dress and I was looking, feeling good about myself. So he said, ah, I have forgotten about this dress. I said, well, it's been in the wardrobe for quite a long time. Then he said, you look smart. I was like, okay, I'm blushing, I'm smiling. Then I said, well, uh, I am also feeling uh, that I'm good. Then he said, and above all, it is not showing your breast. I said, is there a problem showing my breast? He said, it's only me who should see. Of course, I laughed because I was attractive, because he commented, and because he felt this is his territory, and he's so proud of me. Ladies, are you two mothers' union that even your things that you know how to do, that you know how to cook, your husband can't stand you? Are you so mature lady that uh, small, small girls are taking your husband away because you cannot change your, your behavior, you cannot change your looks, you cannot change your dress? I'm advising you today as an honorable lady. I've been married for 30 years, 31 actually, going 32. Sometimes when I tell people I am in my mid-50s, they just say, no, you can't be. But I want to be 70 when my back is still straight. I want to be 70 when I can still dress and I am smart. I want to love myself. I want to be confident. I want to be good looking. And so I have to work on it by what I eat, how I sit, how I walk, and how I dress, and how I talk. And so ladies, stop tempting your husbands. Stop sending them to the choir girls, the worship leaders. Stop sending these girls, your husbands, to the ushers because they dress nicely, decently, and then they are walking in the aisles and the reverend's eyes are on them. Stop tempting your men. Dress decent and love yourself and exude confidence and you will be attractive. I thank you so much for watching this part of dressing appropriately to remain relevant in your marriage. And so we are going to have a short break. We are going to our home remedies. And during that time of home remedies, we'll come up with the healthy recipes that we can have in the home uh, as a family. Uh, and then you, you, you will be healthy. You will be toning down this tummy that is really troubling you. And by that, you will keep your marriage strong and healthy. See you after. Welcome to this segment of health, of health remedies. Today we are making a, a, a remedy that is supposed to make your body alkaline. Now, the body will take in as much disease as possible for as long as the body is acidic. Now, what causes the body to be acidic and to be a hub for all viruses, diseases, and amoeba? The moment your body is acidic, all those substances will come into your body. Now, we can compare an acidic body to a heap of garbage, you know, a dumping ground where they dump so much garbage and then the water, that uh, water starts draining, that smelly water starts draining out of the garbage and attracts all the flies. A system that is not uh, detoxed, if you do not detox your body and make it alkaline, that is how it becomes. Now, we can stop the flies from coming to that uh, garbage heap by doing two things. You can bring a fire, you burn that garbage and, and, and it will be off. You can bring a truck and carry the garbage off and, and dispose it off and the flies will not be there. And so, when we create a, an environment that is unhealthy for viruses, for bacteria and, and fungus and all that and amoeba, the diseases that destroy people will not be having a good ground where they can sit. What causes the acidity? The weather conditions don't help us. The fumes of the car, the, 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 the dust that comes with it, the this garbage that is thrown around, the plastics that we are using, and the food chemicals that we, we find in all those foods, and then the medications that we take. Now, some people take uh, medication for HIV, they are taking medication for pressure, they are taking so many medications on a daily basis. 
All those medications, what they do, they go in the body, make it acidic. For a time, whether you take a thousand and one tablets, your body will give up. The liver will give up, the kidneys will give up, the heart will give up, the lungs will give up, and you only wait for a small disease like, like you know, a, a small common flu. It will put you out of action because your body has already been a condi uh, conditioned to 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 not not to be safe it is conditioned to be safe for diseases now i am not saying you take this uh, without consulting your doctor you need to consult your doctor on what you need to eat and what you don't need to eat but with the people that i work with in most cases we go through an entire detox and then we make the body alkaline so join me as we make an alkaline solution which you take every morning just one glass and it is enough for you for the whole day it will not only make your body alkaline it will burn body fat more especially around the waist it will burn the body fat it will give you more energy and many so many other minerals that are found in these ingredients now this is a glass of water it is lukewarm I heated it a little bit, it was drinking water, I heated it a little bit, and it is rainwater. I, in most cases I use rainwater, if I don't use rainwater, I use my water filter just to make sure that it doesn't have uh, uh, the chlorine and all that. Now the kind of water filter I'm talking about, can that camera turn that side? No, I will show that to you another time. It's a candle water machine. It filters water, removes chlorine, removes viruses, removes chemicals. It has a very high grade filter. And so when I get my water, I get it when it is safe, as good as rainwater. And so today I'm using rainwater, which I harvest, I, I treat, I filter, and, and then I use it for drinking. So this is the rainwater, lukewarm. Then we have our, our oranges, the, or the lemon. These are two and a half lemons. And then we have pink salt, Himalayan pink salt. Now, if you look at uh, the minerals in Himalayan pink salt, you will desire to, to come and, uh, and use this pink salt all the time. I pick it from the supermarket, so I'm not advertising for anyone. It contains natural iodine, okay? It contains natural iodine. It improves digestion. It, it removes, it helps you with cramps. It reduces on diabetes. It improves fluid, ba uh, fluid balance. It means it works. Uh, it's very safe for your kidneys because uh, when kidneys lose the, the balance, then you get fluids accumulating in your stomach, in your feet, the feet swell, and everywhere. So this one reduces blood pressure, this Himalayan salt. I'm reading from the manufacturers. And then... Um, it, it is excellent for red blood cells and it also strengthens your entire immune system. So this is pink salt. I don't use it for cooking. It is meant to be taken raw as it is. Just a small bit of it. Now this is black seed oil. I know people go to supermarkets, they pick, you know, there is a black seed oil which they say is black seed oil, it costs 1000. This is organic cold pressed black seed oil from the Middle East, Israel, United Arab Emirates. It is the original. And so I use this one teaspoon uh, in most of these recipes. Black seed oil, they say it practically helps with everything. Okay, it may not save you from dying, but it will basically treat almost everything that affects you in your body. So this is a must have for every person. Don't just buy, look for the authentic, organic cold pressed, okay? So we'll start by cutting these lemons into two. Okay, now remember all the health benefits of lemon. They say as you squeeze it out, it's acidic, but it has a hundred percent alkaline effect the moment a lemon goes into your body so it is very important when we are alkalinizing our body al making our body alkaline you know english is not easy now hygiene is very key i have sanitized my hands with cedar cedar vinegar 
which kills most of the bacteria, but it is also edible. So you don't use sanitizer, a different sanitizer when you're touching food. You have to use an edible kind of sanitizer. Okay. Two and a half lemons. If you have a, a, a lemon juicer, you can use it. But uh, uh, for certain things, I always prefer doing them the natural way. Okay. This is very simple. Anyone can make it every day in the morning. So I've put in two and a half small lemons. And I'm putting in half a teaspoon of pink salt, Himalayan pink salt. These are minerals that every person must have, okay? I'm going to put in a teaspoon of the black seed oil. You can choose not to put it in and you just, uh, you can choose to just put this teaspoon of, of uh, the black seed oil under your tongue, hold it for about five minutes and drink. But um, I always prefer to mix it in. Okay, so this is our glass of life. It is so full of life, it will make your body alkaline, it will kill the conditions that allow the bacteria and diseases to grow and it will nullify the effects of most of those things you have swallowed that are making you more sick, sick and more sick. So this one will go a long way to help you overcome health uh, beneficial conditions in your body. It will undo the bad uh, state of the body and make it a safe place to live in. Thank you so much. I can actually drink it. It's supposed to be drunk on an empty stomach, so I've not eaten my food. Let me enjoy it. It tastes great. It tastes great, and every sip you take is a sip of life. What happens if you drink it when you're already full? No, you cannot drink it when you're full. That's again. Oh, you cannot take this when you are full because the food conditions in the stomach will interfere with this. They will nullify, so you will have wasted your time. Most of these health benefits, take them when there is no food because they can be effective in cure, in healing your entire digestive system as well as draining much of the bad things from your liver and the kidney and washing them out. So food gives the liver an extra excess baggage. So when this liquid comes in, it is not effective. I hope you learned a lot. I hope you're going to use the things that God has put uh, before you to be able to treat yourself, to manage those challenges uh, in your health before you even accumulate so much money in the doctor's bills. I will make a recap again. Dressing appropriately for every occasion is very important in the relationship. Your posture, the way you sit, the way you walk, the way you stand, the way you present yourself is very key in keeping you healthy but exuding a level of beauty, of attractiveness, a positive vibe around you. Now, I will not emphasize enough what you eat. Don't sit on a plate of food because you've stayed at home, it's lockdown, it's a weekend, and you sit and eat food, that is enough for 10 people. Eat just enough to satisfy you and to make you okay so that you can not burden your liver, your kidney, and your lungs. If this video has been helpful to you, please go to my YouTube channel, Marriage and Life Stories with Kansime. And if you have not subscribed, help, us, help, help me out by subscribing and like the videos. 
and share with your friends so that we can all learn from one another and we go together. See you another time. God bless you.